Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into college sports. My guest today is Jolene Aiken. She is the Senior Associate Athletic Director at Georgia Institute of Technology. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Anthony. Great to be here. Jolene, uh, usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? So Anthony, I'm from Kansas originally, so I just click my heels and, and go back to Kansas once in a while and see my family. But um, so I, I grew up in a small town near Wichita, Kansas, and I went to St. Mary of the Plains College wow. in Dodge City, Kansas, you know, where White Earth is from. <laughs> and uh, I went there for two years, Anthony, and then after two years, I transferred to Kansas State University. Um, I was a basketball player while I was at St. Mary of the Plains College. And then after two years when I transferred to Kansas State, I wasn't good enough to play Division I, so I was a manager for the team for my remaining three years. So that's where I, I started my schooling at St. Mary's, but I graduated with my bachelor's and master's from Kansas State. Gotcha. So uh, let's just go back in time a little before we get started on uh, where you are. Um, so in high school, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it freshman year of high school? Was it senior year of high school? When did it all begin for you? I always knew I was going to go to college, you know, even you know, as a freshman. Um, you know, I will say I'm from a rural community. And um, there was, you know, usually students went to either Kansas or Kansas State, University of Kansas or Kansas State, or some two-year junior colleges in the area. Um, so I knew, I, I always knew I wanted to go to college, but I will say that I am the first of my siblings to graduate from college and definitely the first to obtain a master's degree. Um, my father graduated from Kansas State. My mom, she completed one semester. Um, so I always, I always had a drive to do something more than where I was from and just to kind of follow my passion and let it take me wherever I might end up. Wow. So uh, you get to college, uh, what'd you think uh, of the school when you, when you got there? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I loved my time at St. Mary's. You know, I was only there two years, <clears throat> but the great thing about going there to play basketball is that you have an immediate family yeah. that you walk into. <clears throat> and that's important for any student athlete. But Anthony, for any student, what's important for them, I feel as a parent as, and as an administrator, is for them to find their community as soon as they can and get connected with the community, whether it's through organizations involvement, whether it's fraternity life, sorority life, but Students enjoy their college experience more when they can find a community right away and get connected and engaged, no matter who you are. Nice. So, so that's what happened with me. Okay. So now you graduate from college. How does one graduate from college and end up at uh, Georgia Institute of Technology? Well, that's a great question, Anthony. Um, you know, you always hear it's not what you know, it's who you know, okay? Yeah. And that is true, but I will go, I will add on to that in a second. So I earned my bachelor's and my master's from Kansas State. I was a graduate assistant bas basketball coach at Kansas State. When I finished my master's, um, the lady I worked with, Susan Yao, she left Kansas State as the head coach and she went on to Wilmington, North Carolina to coach. Her sister Kay was at NC State and it happened that NC State was looking for a sports marketing intern for women's basketball. That's where it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> Susan knew her sister Kay and recommended me for that job as an intern at NC State. And so that's kind of how it started. But what's interesting about that is that philosophy has grown and evolved over the years, Anthony. And I say that because 
when I left NC State, I went to Wilmington, North Carolina to coach with Susan for two years. And then I knew I didn't want to be a head basketball coach at the Division I level. So I went to Auburn University as an intern back in sports marketing. And I was there six months when I got a phone call from Georgia Tech. And they were, they were, they created a new position called Director of Basketball Operations. And the head coach at the time called her friend at UNC Wilmington and said, I've created this new position. Do you know anyone? She said, yes, contact Jolene. So that's an example of it's not what you know, it's, it's who you know, but then it's also who knows you, mm -hmm. so, which is how. Yeah, so, so, so do you, do you uh, go by the philosophy of uh, networking is a, is a big thing once you're at these positions? Network, networking is a big thing, yes. But I, I also think it's important to establish relationships. You can network and just get to know someone on the surface level, but when someone knows you on a deeper level than that, then I think it's even more helpful. Um, and to be quite honest, Anthony, you never know who's watching you. Sure. And watching you work and what, you know, seeing your drive. If you have drive, you have a strong work ethic. Are you good with people? So there's so many things that, that play into that, but networking is key. But trying to establish relationships in that networking is also important. So now, what do you do as the uh, Senior Associate of Athletics at, at the Georgia Institute of Technology? A variety of things, Anthony. I might have my to-do list every day, and I might not get to it. Uh, because, so I oversee, we've, we've got our executive leadership team, so we have the athletic director, and then we have senior associate athletic directors, and we have a deputy athletic director, but I oversee sports and various departments, and I oversee various departments that really help build a better student athlete, and those departments are strength and conditioning, sports medicine, student athlete development, nutrition. And I also oversee the sports of volleyball, women's basketball, men and women's swimming and diving, softball and men's golf. So as the sport administrator, I am the lead person. I am the point person to work with the head coaches and their support staff. I might be the liaison between the head coach and the executive leadership team as well as the athletic director. Mm -hmm. um, not that the athletic director and the head coach don't meet, but I am just a day-to-day -day point of contact. So if the ticket office has a question about something regarding softball, they'll ask me. Um, regarding women's basketball, they'll ask me. So it kind of works like that. And if there's a, let's say there might be a, a crisis that happens that it might be one of my sports then I will drop whatever I'm doing and, and help navigate through that crisis. If we have, um, you know, our, let's say our softball team is supposed to go on the road traveling and um, the bus company all of a sudden can't find a bus, <laughs> then I might help try to troubleshoot a little bit, but at least giving me the heads up. So that's kind of, some examples on what I might do on a daily basis. Gotcha. So now you talked about uh, four different uh, pillars that you, that you do, which is uh, strength and conditioning, nutrition, and the two others. Um, can you go into those four and, and explain to the audience what those four actually do with the student athletes? Sure. <clears throat> All four of those really help prepare our student athletes to be the best they can be in whatever sport they're in. So from a, a nutrition standpoint, we have two full-time nutritionists and what they do is they will meet with the team each year and kind of talk about, you know, like a new student athlete coming in. All right, so to be, to be able to perform at the best that you can at the level that that's required, you're going to need to properly hydrate. We need to talk about calorie intake and we need to talk about fueling your body. 
And then what our nutritionists will do is they'll work with each of the teams. I'll give you an example. In the sport of men's golf, our nutritionist, she literally studied the life of a golfer. Hmm. And she went to various tournaments and she really studied and watched and understood the amount of hours they were out on the golf course playing and stuff. And so what she was able to present to our head football coach, I'm sorry, golf coach, is she presented to him what she calls yellow jacket snacks. So she literally created three different snack bags that the guys were to eat throughout 18 holes. So wow. it might be holes one through seven is this bag. Holes eight through you know, 14 is this bag. And then holes 15 through 18 is this bag. And what she wanted to do, because with, with various sports, but in the sport of golf, the student athletes will eat a big breakfast. And then they're on the golf course for 18 holes. And they might take a box lunch on the night, you know, on the ninth hole after the turn, but they're not, it's not like they eat and then they play for two hours and then they eat again. It's all day long. So she was able to customize snack bags to help fuel their bodies throughout 18 holes. So that's an example of nutrition. Mm -hmm. Strength and conditioning, for example. You know, we want to build our student athletes and and maybe our student athletes in the preseason, you know, maybe they build for bulk, maybe they don't. Uh, during season, they just try to maintain what they've already built. And postseason, you know, they might assess what they need to do and do they look to, you know, build for bulk or do they just look to try to maintain? But but our strength and training, our strength and conditioning coaches really want to try to help minimize injury make them stronger to help them perform at their peak level. Sports medicine, our athletic trainers, we wanna keep them on the field, in the pool, on the court. We, we you know, so if it's, you know, whatever pre-practice they need to do with them, whether it's tape treatments or what, and, and post-practice, what they need to do or post-recovery, that's what our athletic trainers are, are really working with our student athletes on. And then student athlete development, you know, we want to develop the young people who will change the world and we want to provide them with opportunities to be successful once they graduate from college. So that's what we call life skills and whether it's financial literacy, career enhancement, but those are some of the things that, that uh, the four pillars that you mentioned that we really work with our student athletes on. Would you use the development as, as also as uh, networking as part of it as well? Absolutely, because during our, um, during our, we have a career fair every year just for student athletes. And we have it in our basketball arena that's called McCamish. And we invite employees, companies, um, organizations to it. And we have a variety of organizations, whether it's in the engineering industry, um, you know, the medical field, business majors, you name it. And that is networking for our student athletes with those employers. And then we also try to bring our letter winners club, our former letter winners that are part of the, the club. We really try to engage our current student athletes with our former student athletes, our letter winners. Yeah. So they can help provide guidance and advice on networking and, um, you know, making contacts and helping them develop their network and stuff. So that's what we really um, try to do with our student athletes. Now, um, the name of the show is called Secrets of College Planning. So we, we try to get at least something uh, that, that uh, schools are doing. What do you, what do you think when a student athlete is coming to the university, um, what type of student athletes are you looking for? What, you know, is it, is it just the grades? Is it athletic ability? Is it both? Is it, uh, um, and how much of it uh, is what you're looking for? Great question, Anthony. <clears throat> because Georgia Tech is a unique institution and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a phenomenal institution. We try to recruit 
the best student athletes who are also academically strong. So let me give you some examples of that because the 2021 incoming class, okay, not this fall, but the fall before, there were 44,000 applicants for early action. And we only have spots for about 3,500 first years. Wow. That's a lot. Now these student athletes, I'm sorry, these students and also student athletes, I mean, they they are amazing. I think the average GPA is at least a 4.0. They look at students that have taken AP courses. They look at students that have been very involved um, academically in co-curricular activities and stuff with, with their high schools. Um, and they really try to look for intellectual, curious, prospective students. So as a coach recruiting a student athlete to Georgia Tech, you know, we have, you know, limited majors, you know, engineering, computer science, biology, biomedical engineering, business. I mean, we have a, a, varied, a various amount of degrees, but they're also extremely challenging, uh, but they're also very re rewarding. So Georgia Tech is a public institution it's well, I mean, it is sought after, obviously, with the numbers that I gave you. Um, but if, if a high school student is not intellectually curious, they won't want to attend Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. Because our student athletes, you know, we, we compete at the highest level. We're in the power five level. But we also compete against 4.0 students, 1500 SAT, 35 ACT. Uh, we compete against the best of the best in the classroom and on the, the field or in whatever sport that they may play. But it's, uh, you know, innovation is one, is something that Georgia Tech is known for. And uh, entrepreneurs, I mean, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you definitely want to come to Georgia Tech because the opportunities are just enormous. So it's but, a special place. So now... Um... When student athletes uh, come to the school, a big thing that, that uh, parents always ask is uh, uh, money's available. Now, I know it's a big Division I uh, program, so a lot of the sports are um, have scholarships. Um, but I've talked to athletic directors at Division II and Division III schools that some don't have scholarships. What, what do you see as the difference? Uh, are all the sports, all scholarship sports or? or yes. Okay. Yes, yes. All of our varsity sports are scholarship sports. And um, we, we, you know, meet the scholarship amounts, uh, at least from the in-state level. Uh, so whatever the NCAA maximum amount is per sport for the number of student athletes, I mean, the number of scholarships you can provide, that's what we do unlike division three, which is strictly academic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so now when a, a so then now when a student athlete comes to uh, Georgia Tech, um, what can the student athlete expect when they get there? One of the first things that we do for new student athletes, whether it's a incoming first year or whether it's maybe a transfer student is, we have a program that we call Jumpstart Jackets. And we take all new student athlete, athletes through this Jumpstart Jackets program, which is designed to acclimate them to Georgia Tech from an academic standpoint. And there might be, there might be um, various workshops and programs that we have the student athletes go through, whether it's uh, properly writing an email, whether it's um, academic integrity and, you know, properly citing um, and research and um, meeting with potential major advisors. Uh, but we really want to acclimate our student athletes with life within Georgia Tech so that they can be very successful at the beginning of when they enroll. And we don't want them to fall behind it can be really easy for students that go to any college to fall behind and it's easier to start strong 
than it is to have a mediocre first semester and then try to play catch up throughout your four years. Yeah. Now, can you give me a little sense of uh, the school, the the area of the school, what it looks like? Uh, you know, what what are, what are the students? You know, other than just the school itself, what what else do they do in in Georgia? Sure. Well, goodness, we are in Midtown Atlanta. We are close to downtown, but we're we pride ourselves in saying that we're in Midtown Atlanta, and uh, there is so much to do here. Atlanta is a thriving city. I think our population now might be 10 million and it just continues to grow. And the really, one of the real unique things about Georgia Tech, um, especially within our student athletes is internships are right here. You know, cause we're in the heart of Atlanta. We have 50% of our student athletes intern every summer wow. and that's phenomenal. But we want to grow that to more 90 to 100% of our student athletes intern because the opportunities are here. And it's, it's amazing. We have, from the student body standpoint, Anthony, there's about 400 plus organizations. Students are very involved on campus. And it's amazing just the passion they have for wanting to change the world. And it just the intellectual curiosity that they have and just the it's a diverse group of students and the, the faculty members are diverse diverse and so is staff and it's just it's a phenomenal place to be and I'm inspired every day whether I'm with working with our student athletes or whether I'm working with our students and if I can throw one more thing at you this past weekend our women's basketball team came back from the NCAA tournament unfortunately we lost in the first round to Kansas but we were on the plane with the band and our dance team. So that's about 42 students. I asked them, tell me what your major is. And this is what I have. There were industrial engineering, mechanical engineering, public policy, one business major, math, biology, civil engineering, computer science was, had the highest number of students chemical engineering, neuroscience, um, computer engineering, industrial design. I was aerospace engineering. I was blown away. And they gave up their time to be on campus to go to California with us to play in the band and to, to perform. And the fact that there was no easy major. Reading those majors, Anthony, that, that can be a little intimidating for me. Sure. But uh, they're wonderful, very involved, passionate students. And it's just wonderful to be a part of. I, I find doing this show, uh, student athletes are very, uh, very much into time management. Um, it's a big thing for student athletes, especially at the Division I level. Um, I, I'm assuming the coaches uh, get involved in that and, and, and how to allocate the time management, I guess. Yes, they do. Um, it is something that the NCAA requires us to. So we sit down with <clears throat> coaches, with a couple of captains or student athletes with each of the teams, and we kind of go over. This will be the practice schedule for this fall semester. These are the days off that you're going to take, and all that stuff is documented, and you have to properly uh, document everything and give ample notice if you're going to change anything. So you do that in the fall and you do that in the spring, but time demands, time management is a big topic. Yeah, great. So we're coming to the end of our show. Um, usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents and the students that are watching this? Uh, what advice do you want to give them? I would say you want to make sure um, if you're an incoming student, you want to make sure you need to take some AP courses. Um, you also want to make sure you do the best you can academically and your grades are very important. Test taking is very important. And if you need to find a tutor to help you take tests, I suggest that you do that. But also get involved because they want to look at the total person that is applying to whatever institution. And especially at Georgia Tech, we want, if you're interested in Georgia Tech, but we want 
we want to see that you're intellectually curious for you to come and thrive at Change Attack and help go on and change the world. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. So you, you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time. Thank you.